Welcome to another video from explainingcomputers.com. This time we're visiting the 2018 TCT show in Birmingham in the United Kingdom. This amazing event runs for three days and is the place to see the latest and the greatest in 3D printing. So let's go and see what we can discover. The TCT show is a temporary home to hundreds of 3D printers, from consumer desktop models to commercial photopolymer hardware and industrial machines used to make end-use metal components. There are far too many 3D printers in residence for me to include all of them in this video. So here I'll select just a few that really caught my attention. At the entry level, Monoprice are exhibiting their MP Select Mini V2, which sells for £189 or $189. This is a very compact consumer printer and even comes with a colour screen and heated print bed. Over on the 3D Primer stand, very similar looking hardware is badged as the Primer Creator P120 and sells for $299 or £250. For some, such hardware will serve as a very good first 3D printer. This said, my recommendation at TCT for an entry level device would be the tier time setters. Available in standard and extended models that sell as kits for $399 or $499, these produce better prints while still being compact and robust devices. For those in search of larger and more expensive desktop hardware, Ultimaker are showcasing their new S5. Larger again than their previous models, this dual nozzle printer works with a range of industrial grade materials and will probably become very popular indeed. One of my own favourite 3D printers is the Stratasys J750, which uses material jetting to produce amazing multicolour prints such as this. However, the J750 now has a competitor in the form of a new Mimaki 3D UJ553, which is on display on the hybrid services stand. This also uses a UV curable inkjet technology to produce 10 million colour output within its 50 by 50 by 30 centimetre build area. As you can see, the quality of the final prints is exceptional, and I think that the Mimaki will become a favourite amongst those seeking to produce very high quality colour prints. Meanwhile, on the 3D system stand, another new industrial 3D printer is the DMP Flex 100. This is 3D system's latest entry level hardware for directly 3D printing in metal, and as we can see here, it also produces excellent direct metal 3D prints. <laughs> 3D printing is increasingly being used to produce industrial tooling and final parts and many exhibitors are showcasing developments which assist with such digital manufacturing. For example, back on the 3D system stand is a module from their figure 4 factory solutions range. What we have here is the smallest standalone module from a wider suite of hardware that could integrate many printers with robotic automation. However, even this standalone module is impressive with this roughly 100mm tall photopolymer print having been output in 59 minutes. But integrate several of these production cells into an automated factory configuration and a part could be output every few minutes or even seconds. Also to assist in the production of final parts, many companies have developed reinforced plastic composite materials and associated printers. For example, this motorcycle on the Mark Forge stand contains many 3D printed parts made with a carbon fibre composite. Meanwhile, 3D printing giant Stratasys is exhibiting its new Fortis 380MC carbon fibre edition. This industrial 3D printer is specifically intended to 3D print parts in a nylon 12 material that is reinforced with 35% chopped carbon fibre. Such parts are very strong and very rigid and are suitable for replacing aluminium components in some circumstances. Back on the desktop, we can find many printers at TCT that are intended to speed up low-run production. 
not least, the BCN3D SIG Max that we can see working here can produce two parts at once in either duplication or mirror modes. Meanwhile, this stacker 3D printer is making four parts simultaneously. Even more radically, Tier Time are displaying their new X5, which the company describes as a continuous 3D printing system for low volume manufacturing. The X5 creates objects using material extrusion in the normal fashion. But when it has finished a print, a door opens on the end of the machine and the build plate with the object on it is ejected. Another build plate is then automatically loaded in place and printing begins again. The X5 can be equipped with eight build plates which are automatically exchanged. And, as we can see here, a fabric bin may also be attached to catch ejected prints and build plates during totally automated, continuous operation. A final company taking a radical approach to continuous production is Black Belt. Here, the orientation of the printhead has been rotated with layers extruded at an angle to form objects on a moving carbon fibre belt. This allows 3D prints of any length to be created, as well as continuous production runs, as we can see here. The inventor of this amazing technology was inspired by an artist's impression of a future digital factory, and it's amazing to see how the concept has been realised in the real world. Many exhibitors at TCT have some amazing objects on display. Not least, the 3D system stand is defended by this really cool Star Wars Executioner Trooper. This was created to help promote the film The Force Awakens and was built from 3D printed master patterns from which multiple promotional pieces were produced. Also brought to life from Star Wars is this full-size R2-D2 on the 3D primer stand. This was constructed from about 600 parts that were directly 3D printed and which took about 1500 hours to print. Amazingly, some of R2's parts were even made on an entry-level Prima Creator P120 3D printer like we saw earlier. Our robot friend was built by Manuel Hernandez using designs by Michael Bedley and I'll provide relevant links in the video description. Another movie robot paying a visit to the show is Johnny Five from Short Circuit, which is on display on the GoPrint 3D stand. This amazing reconstruction was made by Wright Robotics, and I'll include a link to their YouTube channel in the video description. Finally, on the E3D stand, we find the amazing Open Dog Robot, built by James Bruton, who runs the X-Robots YouTube channel. This extraordinary original creation is constructed from 3D printed parts, as well as CNC aluminium and lots of motors and electronic components. The evolution of Open Dog is covered in a great series of YouTube videos, and once again, I'll provide a link in the video description. For me personally, Open Dog provides a powerful reminder that 3D printing is most powerful when expertly combined with a host of other technologies and digital production methods. <laughs> 3D printing continues to advance, and it's been great seeing some of the latest hardware and also some amazing 3D prints here at the TCT show. More information on 3D printing can be found in my book, 3D Printing, 3rd Edition. But now that's it from TCT. If you enjoyed this video, please press that like button. If you haven't subscribed, please subscribe. And I hope to talk to you again very soon.